began on a Wednesday morning as I was getting ready from work. My thoughts were preoccupied with the contracts that needed attention and which shoes went better with my outfit. As a paralegal, my life in Dallas seemed to be all about the details, organization, and yet another tough negotiation. But I began to get chills and an upset stomach, just as if I was getting the flu. My first instinct was just to suck it up and push through, but then I realized I could actually use this as a hall pass. So I called in explaining that I would be working from home. But by Friday afternoon, I was still sick in bed. And by the, t by the time my husband Nick got home from work that night, I was vomiting nonstop and my words had become slurred. And in spite of the previous day's visit to the clinic, where I was told to take milk and magnesia and all would be okay, Nick and I knew this was much more serious and 911 became the answer. And in a matter of seconds, my life turned upside down. From the time I arrived in the ER, a team of people were at my bedside. And the bed, the air, and everything around me just was felt cold and not right. I was still vomiting, my abdomen had become very distended, and all the conversations with the medical team were happening so fast. All I could see were the, the faces of all this horror around me. The doctors considered the cause of my symptoms internal bleeding, but they really weren't sure. And at some point, a wonderful nurse grabbed my hand, and with a few comforting words, soothed me into a deep sleep. When I awoke in ICU, I had been in surgery for hours. I was scared, confused, and desperately wanting a tall drink and some good food. But instead, I was put into a medically induced coma on and off for the next eight weeks. My kidneys failed. I was on dialysis, and for all intents and purposes, I was on life support. Blood transfusions had become synonymous with my name, and my family stopped counting the number of lines attached to me when it surpassed 20. Once I was out of the acoma, I learned that I did not have internal bleeding, but in fact had suffered an abscess on one of my ovaries, and the infection from that had got into my bloodstream and ultimately led to strep A and sepsis, also known as multi-organ failure. So essentially, these three days leading up to my ER visit was my body shutting down one breath at a time. And one more detail that changed my life forever. When I fell into sepsis, the body instinctively pushed my blood flow and the oxygen to my heart and my brain to protect those organs. But because your oxygen and blood are so vital that when they are lost from your hands and your legs, the extremities die. It's just like water to a plant. And mine had died. I left a three and a half month hospital stay in July of 2007 as a 35 year old quad amputee. What the hell just happened? <laughs> in 90 days, I went from being an independent adult to a very needy child. I found myself rediscovering everything like how to brush my teeth, how to eat, how to write, how to drive, all over again. But whatever the hell just happened, I decided to learn from it and move forward. After a few days of being home, I realized that I hadn't really looked in the mirror. So I walked into the bathroom, and with my head down, I took a few minutes and got the courage. And looking face to face with my reality, I discovered that my hair had become so dry and thin and just not me. And the back of my head had so many bald spots that it resembled a path of bunkers on a golf course. <laughs> and since hospitals don't provide haircuts or styling techniques with your extended care package, I decided to fix this little detail on my own by purchasing a wig. So my beautiful mom and Aunt Martha took me shopping. 
And I actually had fun trying on the different styles and the different colors. And I started really embracing the freedom of seeing myself in a new light. And the wig I decided on was a longer bob with wispy bangs. And the compliments I started to receive was really boosting my confidence and making the unnatural feel very natural. And it had so much sass, I kind of felt unstoppable, like I should have a one word name like Beyonce. <laughs> Once the wig was set, mom and Martha decided it was time to tackle my unattended eyebrows. So at the salon, we sat down, they were talking and they were laughing and the lovely lady helping us looked at my hands and never said a word. And thanks to my prosthetics, she never noticed my legs. So I started to fall into this a deep relaxation that I hadn't had in a while. She was massaging my face and rubbing oil on my neck. But as I leaned my head back on the chair for the brow wax, a look of, OMG, did that just happen, was plastered on everyone's face. Apparently, my wig had taken a dive to the floor, and I never felt its absence. <laughs> my mom smiled, and Martha, of course, tried not to laugh. And this lovely lady experiencing this, this with us was somewhere between laughing and crying. <laughs> but at this exact moment, I actually started thinking, wow, this must be what my life is going to be like now. Where do I go from here? I mean, it's not like I could have reached on to grab it. Not only am I now missing a wig, I'm missing my hands too. But soon this awkward moment was broken by our laughter. And between my mom and Martha, the wig was gently placed back on my head as if nothing ever happened. And my eyebrows, well, they turned out fabulous. <laughs> and my life had changed beyond the obvious. But I made a conscious choice to find the humor in it and making laughter my new drug of choice. But this would be the first of many awkward moments which continue to permeate my life. One day, I went to get my car from the valet line, and as I lifted up my skirt to step into the car, my leg fell off. <laughs> Thankfully, my legs kind of fell upright so I could recover quickly. But I could in no way recover from the sound the leg made as it hit the ground, or the bewildered stare that the valet attendant and I were locked into. <laughs> I mean, I really didn't know what to explain first. I kind of had a lot going on. <laughs> yes, this elephant was as big as Texas. But after this embarrassment subsided, and the valet attendant realized that this wasn't a party trick, I realized just how funny this really was. And in the end, she offered to help, and I drove off with the confidence that connecting with strangers about the absurdities of my life had now kind of become my new normal. Children have also been great teachers. I was in the grocery store, and a mom passed me with her toddler riding in the cart. And once he saw my hands, he turned to his mom, thinking he was whispering, and says, Mom, she doesn't have any hands just like it was being played through a megaphone and a loudspeaker. But the mom, and, mom just gave me this deer in headlights look, and we sat and chatted for a few minutes about absolutely nothing at all. And in this moment, I realized the older we get, the more we shelter ourselves from real conversation. Maybe it's to protect them, maybe it's to protect us from hurt feelings. But kids really have no filter, and maybe there's something we can learn from that. When situations like these occur, we are all faced with a psychological challenge. I could have become really embarrassed and closed off and decided to never go out in public. But wouldn't that be avoiding life? The trick is to take the elephant out of the room by acknowledging it so that others feel comfortable and that we help change the way the elephant is being viewed. Even though I have had many days of frustration, I've learned this can be the difference between the elephant gaining weight and taking up the whole room, or kneeling down to let us escape gently. So, if you see me reaching out to shake your hand, or asking for a bowl of nuts in a cup, 
or soup in a mug at a five-star restaurant. It's just my way of saying it's okay. I got this, and I'm just like you. Yes, my path has been altered. And this month is my seventh year anniversary of being a survivor. But I'd rather have this life embracing my challenges than no life at all. Thank you. Thank you.